Um, let's see. The district event is something that's put on locally, and First Headquarters doesn't have a lot of um, control over cutting the cost. Part of what happens is by putting it in high schools, just the overall sponsorship costs end up going down. The downside is that you end up having more of them because you end up playing more times. So even if your cost is cut in half, your cost is basically the same because you're doing two of them. The hope is to continue to cut, you know, reduce that cost and make it more and more cost effective as we go forward. Internally, we're always looking at, at cost cutting. And, you know, bag and tag is one of the things we're looking at. And, and part of the reason is because as, as gracious and as generous as FedEx has been, recently uh, we've had a lot of teams that have exceeded their 400 pound weight uh, limitation and we've been having some crates come in at 6, 8, 10, 12, 1400 pounds believe it or not and at the end of the season we end up having to pay FedEx because we've exceeded their generous donation. So one of the things that we've been doing is trying to be cost uh, avoidance by not having to pay FedEx above and beyond what they give us in their, in their very generous donation. Um. We're in the Mar District, and I have to say that the district events work beautifully. They were wonderful. Several advantages, including cost, but some of the events were Saturday, Sunday. No vacation days for me. Wonderful. Um, they're very local. You know, travel time, at least in the New Jersey area, was an hour. Um, you could go there, and you didn't have to spend hotel time and all that. It worked great. What concerns me is, um, in the future, we use the exact same point system as Michigan did. We'd like to see that in the future, or I'd like to see in the future that, you know, as everyone kind of settles to a district, everyone can kind of then share um, district models. That means that in New Jersey, where our regional used to be, um, we loved having the Brazilian teams, the Israeli teams, the Turkish team. We don't see them anymore. All right, it's only one year. Um, we can always go to Manhattan and see them. But... <laughs> In the future, it'd be great that we can all then share events again. And I'd like the first emperor to, to consider that maybe that's something that um, first needs to maybe enforce a little more strictly, say, you really have to use this kind of a point system model. Well, just to address And the there point. was no question there. Just okay, <laughs> but, but, but to just clarify one thing, with the new drug, when, when Mar elected to go to the district model, we went to the committee and we said, come up with your own point system. Give us what your concept was of a point system because there's some differences of opinion around the cultural awards versus, you know, uh, being ranked based upon your, co your, your competition points. And there's some internal discussion, dialogue always going on. What happened this year was we basically said to Michigan, do your own point system. I'll, we'll give you a shot, let you run it the way you want to run it. And we gave the same opportunity to Mar, and Mar, for some reason, decided at the end that they were just going to go with the Michigan point system. Um, we certainly encourage districts to see if we could come up with the best system, and not saying that Michigan doesn't have a great system, but maybe there's a better system out there, something that more reflects the cultural value of what FIRST is really all about. And we're going to be looking to try to see if we can blend that. Um, one of the great things about the, the district model is, I think, what you pointed out. You don't have to travel far. Hopefully, you're only going as far away as one of the local high schools. It's only, hopefully, you know, a county or two away or, or not that far. Um, so that should end up ha helping to mitigate some of the costs for the teams. Great. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Maybe uh, one of our stormtroopers there has a question. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I've, I've got two questions. Okay. Um, for the first finale on uh, tomorrow night, will that be pretty similar to what it was last year? And, and if you could explain how it'll be. And also, I was looking at the website to try to see what the schedule of the different talks and, you know, um, kind of adult events that weren't competition. And if, if there's any way you could make the website a little easier to navigate, because I usually just kind of give up. Okay. Uh, on your first question, um, I can give you a vague kind of general idea as to what's going on on, on uh, 
a Saturday night uh, on the website. Um, I will certainly end up making sure that our marketing folks know. I think our website is somewhat easier than it used to be. I realize it's not anywhere near where it could be, and we're going to continue to work on that. As far as the uh, the uh, finale activities, my understanding, and you know, you'll have to check to, to make sure, but um, there's going to be three or four different things that are going on. One is the talent show downstairs. Downstairs, yeah, I think it's downstairs in the theater. So that's one of the events that will be happening. There's a, uh, a bus trip to the, um, the uh, arch. And uh, there's some activities, I think, that are going on over there. Then there's a museum site. The which one? The St. Louis Science Center and the City Museum are also on that, uh, that tour. So I think there's going to be buses going to each and every one of those. And if you want, I think you can kind of go from event to event to event to event. Um, you may want to check your timing on that because I'm not sure how late the talent show is going. You have to have a ticket. Oh, and you have to have a ticket. <clears throat> no. Question? I had heard a rumor that um, in the future, first might have everybody do the district system. And so if that were to happen, would we kind of have, you can go to different districts, kind of like you do in football, you can play college football, you play X amount of games outside of your district for this, and then you play your internal district, and then your wins and your outside of conference play a smaller factor in that. Would there be something like that if first were to go to that and, model? And I think that kind of goes along with what Don was asking earlier. And we have not solidified what this district thing is going to look like. We have, we have only two examples that are going on out there. And as we go into the future, we're certainly going to look into, you know, can we end up having teams cross the border, cross the state lines, cross you know, uh, international lines. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to be able to integrate in international teams too, because right now in like New York City, we have a lot of teams that come from overseas. There's a number of different events that have, you know, um, teams that come from you know, either Germany or from the Netherlands or from Bosnia or from, you know, Argentina or Chile, all those places that don't have an event. So we're going to have to figure out how to integrate that in. Now, there's been two different you know, stories on that. One is, are we going to start running district events very much like a college football or college basketball or college uh, baseball scenario where you're looking at a true state championship and you don't really have outside teams coming into play? On the other hand, you have to look at first. First is different than normal sports. And there's been some dialogue about once we start to migrate, maybe we do want to end up having teams go across across those borders so that we can end up having you know all of those important things from a cultural standpoint that are important to first. So I think the jury's still out. We're looking at it. Don't have any answers for you, but we're certainly going to consider it. Question? 